Hey, this is Jason from Strength Running, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how to determine your aerobic paces. These are your endurance running paces, everything from your half marathon pace to your lactate and aerobic threshold paces. Let's dive in. So our question today comes from Michelle, and she wrote into me and asked me about some training plans that she found online that talked about upper aerobic, middle aerobic, and lower aerobic paces. Then she was curious about half marathon pace. How are those three aerobic paces related to half marathon pace, and how do we know which one is which? So I think this is a great question, and I think one of the best ways to describe these paces is to draw a graph. Buckle up, we're gonna get a little nerdy right now. So here's a graph of lactate. And let's just say we're gonna go like this. And let's say about right here or so. So this is time. And this is lactate. So lactate is commonly known as lactic acid. Uh, it's not technically lactic acid, that burning feeling in your legs when you're running really hard at the end of a 5K, for example, that's a lot of lactate in your blood and in your muscles. It causes an acidic environment for your muscles. That's one of the reasons why we involuntarily slow down at the end of races. So you can see as time goes on, uh, and this is also effort, time and effort, as the effort goes up, the amount of lactate that you produce also goes up. Once you reach this critical area right here, that is where you are running anaerobically. So you're running without oxygen. You're producing so much lactate that you simply can't clear it as quickly as you're producing it. Okay, so when we're looking at our graph, this point where you start producing so much lactate that you simply can't clear it, that is what we call your lactate threshold. Now this has a lot of other names that you're probably a lot more familiar with. Tempo te or middle aerobic. So whenever someone says, hey, we're going for a tempo run or there's a tempo on the training plan, they almost always mean that, lactate threshold, right on the border of running aerobically and anaerobically. Now, lower aerobic is down here. This is more commonly known as aerobic threshold. And for a lot of people, your aerobic threshold is also your half marathon pace. So, you know, you, you clearly can't run at your lact lactate threshold forever because you are just awash in lactate and it's very uncomfortable. That's why tempo pace or lactate threshold pace is commonly called a, a comfortably no, I'm sorry. It is an uncomfortably uh, hard pace. There we go. A lot of words here. <laughs> a comfortably hard pace. And for really well-trained runners, it's about what you can run for an hour. Now, aerobic threshold is obviously slower than that. You're not producing as much lactate, and you can maintain that kind of an effort for a much longer time period. So your aerobic threshold, your half marathon pace, that's what this pace is down here. You can hold on to it for a much longer period of time. Now, upper aerobic pace is more like over here. It's a little bit faster than lactate threshold. You're definitely producing more lactate than you can reasonably clear, but it's still uh, a pace that you can maintain for a fairly long period of time. For well-trained runners, this is about 10K pace. Now, for some runners, for maybe you're running 50, 55 minutes, or I would say somewhere between 50 and 60 minutes for 10,000 meters, your lactate threshold is also going to be your 10K pace. So it does depend a little bit on your uh, ability level and where you're at as a runner, but for the most part, aerobic threshold is a little bit slower than lactate threshold, which is a little bit slower than your 10K pace or what Michelle is calling an upper aerobic pace. So let's look at a really quick example from my own running. Back when I was in my peak fitness, my peak uh, ability, back when I was running as, uh, as fast as I possibly could over the course of my career, um, 
the paces for me worked out really, really well. So at my peak, my 10K pace, my PR pace is 527 a mile. My tempo pace was almost always between 530 and 535 per mile. And my aerobic threshold or my half marathon pace, we work it out, 539 a mile. Now, these, these spaces are, are really close together. And I, what you'll find is that the faster runner you are, the more these paces are gonna to start to condense. For the simple reason that as you get better, you are more able to hold those faster paces for a longer time period. So you are gonna be able to redline for a much longer period of time. So at the end of the day, what do we do with this information? Why bother knowing these paces and knowing this terminology? Well, I think the most practical application of this is that it informs your workouts. If you are a half marathoner, you can run slightly faster and slightly slower than your goal race pace to give your training a good dose of what I like to call support paces. These are paces where you're running a little bit faster or a little bit slower than the pace that you want to run and then when you layer that on top of your actual goal race pace you are building all of the physiological tools to help you accomplish your goals on race day so i hope this video was helpful for you if you have any questions about it you know definitely get in touch with me i'm happy to help and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos and we'll be in touch soon